So this video is an introduction into circles. The radius of a circle is a segment that connects the center of the circle, which we'll call A, to any point on a circle. So segment AB represents the radius of a circle. The diameter passes through the center of the circle and is twice the length of the radius. So this is the diameter. And let's call this A, B, C. So segment A, B, C is the diameter of a circle. Now on the left, the center of the circle is point A, so you could describe the circle like this. On the right, you can describe the circle based on the center point B. Now the area of a circle is pi r squared. And the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. The circumference of a circle is basically the perimeter of the circle. It's the distance around the circle. Now the diameter is twice the radius. So we can replace 2r with the diameter. So you can also calculate the circumference using this equation. It's pi times the diameter. Now sometimes you may need to calculate only a section of the circle. For example, let's say this is point A, B, and C. And let's say B is the center of the circle. And we wish to calculate the area of this sector. How can we do so? And also, how can we calculate the length of this arc, which I'm going to call S? So if B is the center of the circle, that means segment AB and segment BC represents the radius of the circle. Now to calculate the shaded region, the area of the shaded region rather, it's very similar to the area of a circle but with some adjustments. Notice that we have a fraction of the circle. So whatever this angle is, theta in degrees, it's going to be theta divided by 360 because the entire circle has an angle of 360. So theta over 360 represents the fraction of the circle multiplied by the area of the circle. So this equation will give you the area of a sector or the shaded region that we have there. Now to calculate the arc length of that sector, it's basically a fraction of the circumference. So it's theta divided by 360 times the circumference of the circle. So that's how you can calculate the arc length. So S, the arc between A and B, you can describe it this way. So this represents the arc between points A and point C. And the measure of arc A to C, that's an angle. So in this example, it's theta. So theta represents the measure of arc AC. To calculate the length of arc AC, you can use this formula. Now let's talk about chords. Let me draw a better circle. It's not really that much better. Now what exactly is a chord? A chord is a line segment that connects two points that are on the edge of the circle. So AB is a chord. CD is also a chord. Now let's say that this point is the center. Let's call this DEF. So we have circle E or with uh, center E. And DF is a chord. Now a chord that passes through the center of a circle is also known as the diameter of the circle. So DF is basically a chord and it's the diameter of the circle, which means EF represents the radius of the circle and DE is also the radius of a circle. So a chord is simply a line segment that starts at one end of the circle and touches another point on a circle. Now what happens 
if we form an angle using two chords. So the two chords are chord AB and chord BC. And notice that this angle, angle ABC, which is known as an inscribed angle, it has an intercepted arc AC. which we can write it like this. Now, let's say if the inscribed angle is 50 degrees. So if angle ABC is equal to 50 degrees, what do you think the measure of arc AC is? It turns out that the intercepted arc has an angle that's twice the value of the inscribed angle. So this is going to be 100 degrees. So make sure you understand that. Now let's say if you have an angle that touches the center of a circle as opposed to a point on a circle. So let's say C is the center and this is 40 degrees. And let's call this point A and point B. What is the measure of arc AB? The measure of arc AB is the same as the angle that touches the center of the circle. So it's going to be 40 degrees. But if you have an inscribed angle, now let's say this is 80, the inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. So this is going to be 40. Now let's work on some problems. So we're given the diameter of a circle and it's 8 centimeters. Our goal is to calculate the circumference and the area of a circle. So let's draw a picture. So this is the diameter. This is 8 centimeters. The circumference is simply pi times the diameter. So it's pi times 8, or you can write it as 8 pi. So that's the exact answer of the circumference. Now, if you want to get the decimal value for that, just type in 8 pi in your calculator. And so you should get 25.1 centimeters as a circumference. So that's a rounded answer. Now the area is pi r squared. So first we need to calculate the radius. The radius is one half of the diameter. So it's half of 8, which is 4 centimeters. So the area is going to be pi times 4 squared, or 16 pi. So 16 pi is the exact answer, and the units for that are square centimeters. This is in centimeters. And 16 pi is 50.27 square centimeters as a decimal, approximately. Number two, the area of a circle is 81 pi. What is the circumference of the circle? So we know the area is pi r squared. And the area is 81 pi. So let's calculate the value of r. So first, we could divide both sides by pi. If we do so, these will cancel. So 81 is equal to r squared. And now we just got to take the square root of both sides. The square root of 81 is 9. And so that's the radius. It's 9 units long. The circumference is 2 pi r. So it's 2 pi times 9, which is 18 pi units. So as a decimal, that's 56.55 units long. Now the diameter is twice the value of the radius. So it's 2 times 9, or 18. And so that's the length of the diameter of a circle. Number three, the radius of the circle below is 7 inches. What is the angle measure of arc AC? So this is arc AC. So the angle measure of arc AC is equal to this angle, where B is the center of the circle. So BC is 7 inches long and AB is 7 inches long. So the measure of the arc is 150. Now what is the length of arc AC? 
So to calculate the arc length, which you can denote as s, it's equal to theta divided by 360 times the circumference of a circle, which is 2 pi r. So this angle is 150. We need to divide that by 360 and then multiply that by 2 pi times the radius, which is 7. So 150 divided by 360 times 2 times 7. This turns out to be 35 pi over 6. Now, if you want to see how to get that answer without a specialized calculator, first we can cancel the 0. And 15, we can reduce that to 5 times 3. 36, that's 3 times 12. And 12, I'm going to break that into 6 times 2. And we have 2 and 7 on the outside. So notice I can cancel a 3, and I can cancel a 2. So I'm left over with 5 times 7, which gives me 35. And I have a 6 on the bottom. So that's where the 6 comes from. And plus we have pi. So the arc length, so arc AC has a length of 35 pi over 6. Now as a decimal, this is 18.3. Now let's calculate the area of the shaded region. So the area of the blue shaded region is going to be the angle divided by 360 times the area of the entire circle. So the angle is 150, and we're going to divide that by 360, and the radius is 7, so we're going to multiply it by 7 squared. So once again, we could cancel 0. 15 is 5 times 3. 36 is 12 times 3. And 7 squared is 49. So 49 times 5 is 245. So this is going to be 245 pi divided by 12. So that's the exact answer. And as a decimal, this is about 64.1 square units. So this represents the area of the sector. Calculate the value of x and y in each figure shown below. So for the circle on the top left, we can see that b is the center of the circle. Therefore, x and the measure of arc AC has to be the same. So for the first problem, x is equal to 80 degrees. Now for the second problem on the top right, the inscribed angle is going to be half of the intercepted arc. So y is 1 half of 60. So in this case, it's 30 degrees. Now for this one, the intercepted arc is twice the value of the inscribed angle. So x is going to be twice the value of 80. So it's 2 times 80, or 160 degrees. Now what about the third problem on the bottom left? One thing I forgot to do is tell you what we're trying to calculate. So let me do that now. What is the value of x in this figure, where x represents this angle right here? So notice that it intercepts these two points, which we can call BC. And notice that A is the center of the circle. So therefore, chord BC is the diameter, which bisects the circle into two parts. Therefore, half of 360 is 180. So the intercepted arc is 180, which means that the inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. So X is going to be half of 180, which means that it's 90. So this triangle is a right triangle. Number five, if AB is 48 and BC is 14, what is the area of the shaded region? So the area of the shaded region is the difference, AS would represent the area of the shaded region, is the difference between the area of the circle, AC, minus the area of the triangle, AT. Now the area of a circle is pi r squared. The area of a triangle, particularly a right triangle, it's 1 half base times height. So triangle ABC, which looks like this, I'm going to draw it this way. So this is the hypotenuse. 
So this is vertex B, this is A, and this is C. Now, AB is 48, and BC is 14. Now, notice that AC is the equivalent of the diameter of the circle. If we can calculate the diameter, we can calculate the radius. Now, BC is the base of the triangle. So, BC is 14. So, lowercase b in this equation is 14. The height of the triangle is 48. That's AB. So now we just got to calculate the radius. So let's focus on calculating the diameter first. So for a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. C is the hypotenuse, which is across the box. So that's the same as the diameter. A is going to be 14. You can make A or B 14. So if A is 14, B has to be 48. Now 14 squared is 196. 48 times 48 is 2,304. So if we add up 2,304 plus 196, that will give us 2,500. And that's equal to d squared. So to calculate d, we've got to take the square root of both sides. 2,500 is the same as 25 times 100. The square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 100 is 10. So 5 times 10 is 50. So the diameter is 50. The radius is 1 half of the diameter, so it's half of 50, which is 25. So now we have everything that we need to calculate the area of the shaded region. So it's going to be pi times 25 squared. So 25 squared is 625. Half of 14 is 7. And 7 times 48 is 336. So this is the exact answer. It's 625 pi minus 336. Now let's get the answer as a decimal. 625 pi is 1963.5. If we subtract it by 336, this is equal to 627.5. And so this is the area of the shaded region.